I thank uh, Pratap sir and the organizers for having given this opportunity. Well, I'll start with the case history of a 70-year-old gentleman. Post angioplasty to the circumflex, the stent could not be properly deployed at that point of time. He presented to a nearby hospital. The rest engineer, troponin, was positive, so was taken up for angiographic evaluation. You could see that the circumflex has got the stent and there is significant restenosis over there. And you could also see that the stent is under-expanded in the circumflex territory. In the second image, you could see that the OM1 has got a very critical stenosis. And um, you could see in the stent boost that the stent in the mid portion, it's not properly expanded. So they tried to open up the vessel with multiple non-compliant balloon, balloons. They wired the OM1, OM2, multiple balloon dilatation. It was not possible to open it up. So it was referred to as for a possible stent ablation. These were the images taken in our cath lab. The first one, you could see that uh, the stent is under-expanded in the mid portion. Second image, you could see that the OM1 and OM2 is flowing well and there is a tight stenosis in the stented segment with an under-expansion. Well, we started off with a 1.25 millimeter bar at 160,000 RPM. We were gentle with the, with, the, with the lesion initially. You could see that we were able to make some progress into that particular under-deployed stent. It wouldn't move distally. So we had to increase the RPM to 180,000 and even 200,000 RPM. Well, uh, even at 200,000 RPM, we were not able to get across the lesion. Now, how does stent ablation work? There are three mechanisms. One, it ablates cuts or pulverizes the stent struts. Secondly, it ablates the calcium that protrudes through the struts. And once the struts are ablated, then the calcium, superficial calcium can be ab uh, ablated. Thirdly, most importantly, heat generated leads to thermal injury that liquefies the stent as well as calcium, which makes it more supple so that you will be able to dilate with a high pressure bellow. So, uh, nearly 12 runs of 15 seconds each, 160,000, 180, and 200,000 RPM, not able to get across the lesion. Patient developed angina, slow flow. So, we had to remove the bar. You could see that the flow inside the vessel is not so good. So, at this point of time, we thought that we have done enough of burring, even the thermal injury probably will be able to dilate with a high pressure balloon. We tried to go in with an opian balloon. The opian balloon wouldn't track it to that. However, we tried to get with a non compliant balloon, non compliant balloon would track it, but then we were not able to open it. Now we switched over to the next New York bar, the second new bar, that's a 1.5 millimeter bar. Started off with 160,000 RPM, increased to 180,000 RPM, and again even up to 200,000 RPM. Some point of time I started becoming impatient and try. You could see in the first image that I was trying to do the burning. You could see the guide catheter is packing out, which should not be done at any point of time doing rotablation. Try to resist the idea of pushing it through and kept on burring it again another 10 runs so we used two bars 1.5 1.25 we were not able to get across we again had started seeing slow flow inside that so we again thought that probably the thermal injury would help again we started trying with the non-compliant balloon and the opian balloons the non-compliant balloon would go into the lesion however we are not able to open it and the opian balloons it would partially go into the lesion it wouldn't really get into the uh, narrowest part of the vessel so at this point of time we couldn't do anything much uh, it was almost one and a half to two hours at this point of time then then again we moved on to a third bar this was a 1.5 millimeter bar the third one the new bar and at this point of time you could see that we were able to get across then you could see that we are doing the polishing run and finally went ahead with um, bifurcation stent implantation opened up well and we could achieve a good result well is stent ablation dangerous well you could have two complications perforations are very rare you could have a stent a st a stuck bar in approximately 10 percent of situations if you're very aggressive with, with pecking movement and um, uh, with uh, with uh, uh, if you're very aggressive with the uh, ablation you you're likely to have a stuck bar and you could also have slow flow with aggressive um, burring and what about particle size that's produced during the stent ablation uh, it's a 2009 japanese article that says the 90 percent of particles generated is five microns it flows through the microcirculation taken away by the reticular endothelial system however a POSIGN model 2012 article 18 80 percent of particles are less than five microns however 95 percent particles less than 15 percent uh, 15 microns in size this is a very interesting article in a japanese article in case study approximately already under expanded stent once 1.75 millimeter rotablation stent ablation was done stented and you could see in the second image that the, the distal portion of the stent has been totally ablated off and what is interesting was that uh, they they assess the index of microvascular resistance also pre-procedure microvascular resistance was 19 post procedure it was 31 it increased transiently and they brought the patient back after one month and they found out that the microvascular resistance has come down so whatever said and done whatever small small particles that go down that can at least lead on to microvascular obstruction and that can lead on to trouble 
well, what should be the ideal technique of um, doing a stent ablation? Most important thing, be gentle with the uh, under, under deployed stent. Try to advance the rotor wire over a micro catheter because you have an under expanded stent. You, if you try to meddle with the floppy wire, you might you might uh, damage the rotor wire. So it's good to have a, a, a workhorse wire used, then a micro catheter, and then exchange with the rotor floppy. Start with a smaller bar, 1.25 or 1.5. Step up the bar size in most of the situation, not exceeding 0.6. But to artery ratio, lower speeds preferable, 160,000 RPM, shorter runs, 15 seconds. Give a better breathing space at least to once or wait for one minute before you go for the next run. Avoid more, more than 5,000 drop in RPM or never try to push the bar through. And uh, if at all you have to wait or you have to uh, continue for more than 10 runs, hope that you have uh, you have eroded the, the bar has been eroded, the bar has become bald and switch over to a new bar. Now, what do you why would you want to take a uh, switch over to a new bar? Uh, this is an ultra microscopic study. You could see that the rose uh, arrow it points towards the uh, diamond chips, and you can see the green arrows that's looking at diamond pits. What has happened is when you do a stent ablation, these diamond chips that they, they get eroded away. So maximum beating happens with the first bar. So with the first bar, if you're not able to cross the lesion after 10 times of 10 runs, probably you need to switch over to a second bar. This is another patient who had a dextrocardia pro proximal lady hostile and lady stent implantation. You could see in the second image that um, that, that particular area, the stent is totally under deployed, uh, which was done long ago. And they could also see, also see that there is significant amount of calcification. Went through the femoral approach. That's the first image. You can see that the hostile LED is totally stenosed and an under, under deployed stent to under expanded stent in the proximal left-handed descending artery. We inverted the images in the second image. You can clearly see the stent over there, which is totally under deployed stent in the proximal left-handed descending artery. Again, the same procedure, 7 French guide catheter, 1.25 millimeter bar, 1.5 millimeter bar, 180,000 RPM, 200,000 RPM. And finally, we were able to get across nearly bar time of almost 4 minutes. Once we were done with that, we did a balloon dilatation that was a uh, cutting balloon. And following that, you could see in the second IOS run, you could see that the, the osteal LED is almost a 3.5 millimeter vessel. And the stent seems to be so much under deployed. Uh, mind you, it was after the rotablation as well as, um, as, well as um, balloon dilatation. You can also see some calcification over there. Finally, multiple balloon dilatations, we were able to stent that post dilatations and that was the final result. You could see that um, the osteolid is well expanded. These are the pre and post procedure images um, uh, of this particular same patient. The, uh, well, what does the data say regarding stent ablation? An article published in 2019 says that uh, success rates are quite good, nearly 100%. However, the maze at the end of one year is approximately 40%. This was an article published in the Euro Intervention 2016. 12 patients stent ablation. Uh, the overall maze at six, um, six months was almost 50% and the mortality was almost 25%. And the burn entrapment was on nearly 0% in this particular study. What is very interesting down there is every time you want to be very gentle while doing stent ablation and you always tend to say that 5, 000, more than 5,000 deceleration should be avoided. But then they made out that 100% of patients they had to they had to they had deceleration more than 500 um, more than 5,000. Which means that when you want to do a stent ablation, you have to be really hard onto the lesion. So in closing, dear friends, technical success of stent ablation is extremely high. The, be cautious about um, with with respect to stack bar and slow flow. Despite good initial success, the long term may seems to be plentiful. So the most uh, most important point in preventing stent to avoiding stent templation would be preparing the lesion when every time you see a lesion, prepare this lesion well, deploy the stellen well so that you do not have an under expansion, do not have to go in for stent templation and that's how you could avoid long term problems with the patient. Thank you so much for your patient. Uh, very nice presentation Dr. Deepak. I have a couple of questions to ask you. Why should you start with a lower size bar? Number one. Number two, you upgraded three bars. You started with 1.25, you went to 1.5. If you see the distal vessel diameter, it is more than 3 millimeter. Why didn't you opt for a bigger size bar? As per the trial, you see the bar to distal artery ratio, if it is around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, you choose bar like that. So don't you think so? One bar and lastly, at the point where you had the stenosis, you should have gone at lower RPM and churned and cut the stunt studs and then proceeded further rather than touching and coming back. Yes, so I have the answer for both the questions. Yeah, please. Well, it's always recommended when you when you want to have a stent ablation, always start with the low, smallest possible size because 
you go with a higher size, the chance of going across will be less likely. Secondly, if you go across also, again, the ch chance of stuck burr is more with bigger size. So it's always recommended start 1.25 or 1.5. The second point is regarding, um, what is the second point that you, that you uh, asked? What, uh, what I asked was uh, the size of burr, you have told that, and then why did you go, go at ah, okay, the, the slow speeds. Yes. Yeah, it's also, it's also recommended that they have, they have, there has been a study, not with the stent ablation, wherein you, you, you are in, in uncrossable lesions, cross at very high pressures, and then they actually, let's say 200, 200,000 RPM, they have crossed the lesion, and again, they slowed the uh, RPMs to 140,000 and all. They went, stayed at the lesion, hoping that you would get a better luminal gain. But then the OCT has proven that it's not going to be a, of use. So primarily you just have to go across at whatever speeds are possible without getting the stuck, stent stuck and the burrs getting stuck over there. Exactly. That is the point I want to make. It is not like a lesion what you are crossing. True. If it is a tight calcified lesion, you go at high RPM, cross it, come. It is a strut sitting there which you have to churn, you have to cut and you have to cross the lesion. Okay. So that is what you go at low RPM, choose a bigger size burr and uh, Probably you could have Sorry got it done. Interrupt. It's a really Anyways, fascinating discussion. I think stent ablation is not for the faint-hearted. I don't think even the most experienced rotablators have had more than four or five cases in their entire career. I think Deepak has summarized it fantastically. I don't think anything that he said can be replaced by even a word can be changed. I think it's perfect. It matches with our experience. We'll go move on to the next talk, Thank Dr. You so Claire. Much. Thank you.